You've probably heard the advice, scale through others, or be a force multiplier if you want to be a leader, but nobody actually explains what that means or how to do it. And that's why most people never make the jump from individual contributor to true leader, even if they have the title. Here's what I learned after nearly 20 years at Amazon. The difference between someone who gets promoted to senior and beyond isn't technical skills. It's about whether you can multiply your impact through others without being their manager. My name is Steve Wynn. I was a principal engineer at Amazon where my performance was measured by the influence I had over 400 developers, none who reported to me. They reported to my manager, a VP. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how force multiplication works and why everything you think you know about delegation is actually preventing you from becoming a leader. If you like this type of content and want more, let me know by hitting the like and subscribe button or by leaving a comment. I try to read everyone. Before we get into it, you have to understand the most critical concept, the one that most people misunderstand, leverage. Archimedes, the legendary Greek mathematician said, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. Levers create mechanical advantage, meaning a small force applied over a long distance can lift a heavier load over a short distance due to the principle of torque. In other words, whatever input you put in is multiplied on output. If there's no increase from the input, you have no leverage. Before we talk about scaling through others and being a force multiplier, let's talk about scaling ourselves. Let's take two accountants, Alice and Bob. Alice handles twice the number of clients as the average person at the firm, but she's doing it by working a 996 schedule, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. Bob is also handling double the clients, but he went about it in a different way. When he learned about Excel macros, they blew his mind. He spent nights and weekends diving super deep into them, which led him to discover Python, scripting, and building simple automations. Between Alice and Bob, it's clear Bob is employing leverage and Alice is just brute forcing it by simply working harder. And that's my first point. Leverage, when it comes to work and career growth, is all about skill acquisition. The highest leverage you have comes from learning pertinent skills and stacking them. Learning about Excel macros and Python and scripting and automation makes Bob a potent accountant. That's not to say Alice doesn't have any skills, she can work long hours and do it without burning out, I'd consider that a skill. But for most people I know, these types of hours are unsustainable, and so it's just better to uplevel yourself through knowledge and to put in the extra hours only when needed. Before we continue, let me show you a perfect example of force multiplication in action from today's video sponsor, Hostinger Horizons. Are you tired of sitting on ideas because they take too long to execute? Watch this. I've been meaning to make a photography portfolio for ages. I know how to code, but who has the time? I'm just typing, create a modern photography portfolio with a gallery and an about section. Horizons is building it right now, a real working website. Now let's refine it. Make the gallery minimal, add a gear section with affiliate links. Change happens instantly. This isn't a mock-up, watch. Gallery works, page loads fine, navigation's live. It's a functioning website, and I can monetize immediately. Want to tweak something? Use the content editor to change things in line. I can change the photos in my gallery in a snap. Plus, it's automatically mobile responsive. It adapts perfectly to any screen. Everything is managed in one space, domain, hosting, and email. If this is your first website, you don't have to connect and manage multiple platforms. Everything's SEO optimized, and with a yearly plan, you get free hosting and domain. Hostinger has been doing this for more than 20 years, serving millions globally. This is professional infrastructure that works. Ready to launch that idea you've been sitting on? Get started today with Hosting Horizons. Use code ALE for 10% off. Links down below. Thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring and helping me finally launch my portfolio. Now that we've talked about individual leverage, let's talk about scaling through others and being a force multiplier. You might have heard about the concept of delegation. All it means is the act of trusting others with a task or responsibility. There it is. If we're able to spread tasks and responsibilities to others, then we're being a force multiplier, right? And actually, no, not by default. There's a common anti-pattern that nearly everyone falls into. Let me explain. I remember the first big project I got assigned when I was promoted to senior engineer at Amazon around 2012. I was leading a team of about eight other software engineers, half junior and half mid-level. 
I spent so much time breaking down the project into smaller pieces. Each task had their dependencies mapped out, and I spent a ton of effort breaking them into junior appropriate or mid-level tasks. The idea was that if each task got done, then the project would be completed. That's what happened. While there were a couple of challenges that cropped up, the project was completed on time and at high quality. You can imagine my shock and frustration when my manager, during my annual performance review, told me that I needed to work on scaling through others and being a force multiplier. What are you talking about? I said. I just let and delivered this big project. Do you see my mistake? The reason was that even though I delivered, there was no leverage. Suppose the project required 100 units of work. I broke the project up into one 10 unit piece for myself, 12 five unit pieces of work for the mids, and 15 two unit pieces of work meant for juniors that the mids could also pick up. The input was 100 units and the output was 100 units. I call this type of delegation simple load balancing. And that's my second point. You can't be a force multiplier with simple load balancing because all you're doing is chunking the work up. The solution, just like in the individual case, involves skill acquisition. You simply can't scale through others without upleveling the people on the team. It's strictly necessary. So how do we delegate the right way? We should know now that it involves upleveling the people that you're leading. The key is to give people work that's just barely outside of their abilities. You might become a better guitar player by playing the same three songs over and over again, but the only real way to grow is the uncomfortable work of doing things that you don't yet know how to do. In order to do this, you have to know your people and what they're able to accomplish today. By matching the work they can't do yet and providing them support, you can demonstrate scaling through others and being a force multiplier. But there's a critical part that you can't mess up, otherwise you throw everything away. Suppose I was leading a team of six people and I gave them all a bit of work that was outside of their current skill level. For one of them, they have to uplevel their coding skills. For another person, they have to uplevel their design skills. For another person, they need to get better at interacting with partners and stakeholders. You get the idea. Suppose, because I was nervous about handing out all of this difficult work to people, maybe we're in a situation where deadlines are tight and the stakes are high, that I started doing daily check-ins with everybody. I would ask them if they were blocked, if they needed help, whatever they needed. Would I still be scaling through others? Absolutely not. Delegation and micromanaging actually takes away from your personal bandwidth, leading to you not being as effective as you can be. And that's my third point. You have to trust your people to scale through others. For those that you don't trust to work independently, you can't give them bigger scope. For those that you do extend some trust to, you have to make sure that you support them, that you don't give them too much, that it's a safe space for them to grow, but critically, you have to go away and let them do the work. If you hover over them, you aren't giving them a chance to grow on their own. This is really difficult, especially for high performance people, because you know how to do this stuff. You know how to do it at high quality, but that doesn't matter. You have to let them deal with ambiguity on their own. Otherwise, your capacity will get ransacked and your people's growth will be stunted. If you've made it this far into the video, do you see what I did there? Hopefully I up-leveled you in this video and became a force multiplier through YouTube. Don't worry, I'm not gonna micromanage you. If you're wondering how to deal with ambiguity, maybe you got an assignment from someone that's just outside of your comfort zone. Don't worry, I got you. Check out this video where I break down my exact method for dealing with ambiguity. This is my personal method and you won't find it anywhere else.